Hello everybody, uh, my name is Marco Bertulia. I'm a senior derivative specialist with Infinity Futures. Thanks for coming. I know that there's a lot of European customers out there and I wanted to uh, do a quick brief intro to all our Italian uh, speaking friends. I know there's a lot of Italian people interested so I'm going to do a brief intro in Italian and uh, the presentation though will be in English so it will also be recorded after uh, but it will be in English so if you guys can follow you can go then on youtube.com forward slash infinity futures. Uh, salve a tutti, mi chiamo Marco Bertuglia, sono il manager del desk italiano di Infinity Futures. Uh, siamo molto contenti di avere questo evento, abbiamo qui con noi uh, uno dei rappresentanti del CME per lanciare questi nuovi uh, eccezionali prodotti che sono in realtà già partiti e stanno avendo una popolarità uh, al di fuori di ogni aspettativa. Uh, sono nuovi prodotti micro, regolamentati, centralizzati, quindi per tutti coloro e stiamo ricevendo diverse eh, appunto, domande, di, eh, un grosso interesse da tutti coloro che sono al momento sul mercato del Forex e dei CFD e che hanno veramente bisogno e desiderio di eh, approcciare un mercato regolamentato e centralizzato, quindi non fare trading contro il broker o appunto contro un, un ente istituzionale. Quindi sono prodotti regolamentati eh, e centralizzati che ora offrono un'ampia flessibilità perché sono un decimo di quello che erano il prodotto, che erano i, appunto, i, i mini standard. Sono i quattro mini, mini Nasdaq, mini S&P, mini DAO e mini Russell. Uh, mi auguro che potete sentire questa presentazione e rivederla poi sul canale nostro di YouTube. Se avete domande registratevi tranquillamente, abbiamo una pagina web infinityfutures.com, infinity con la yfutures.com, registratevi pure per una demo, è gratuita e per 30 giorni. Se avete domande potete anche scrivere all'Italian Desk, Italian Desk, chiocciola infinityfutures.com. Grazie ancora e adesso arriverà uh, Jim Cannina, Managing Director di Infinity, per fare appunto la presentazione in inglese. A presto! Good morning, this is Jim Cagnina with Infinity Futures. Unfortunately, I do not speak Italian. I wish I did. Uh, today's presentation will be in English. We do have Mr. Dave Lerman here, a Senior Director at the CME Group and perhaps one of the most knowledgeable uh, futures trading experts that I know. Uh, Dave's worked for the CME Group for a very long time, and he's going to go ahead and uh, do a presentation on what I would consider, at least in my experience, one of the most exciting new product, new product launches in the futures markets that I've seen. And I've been involved in these futures markets for a long time, early 80s, as a matter of fact, not to date myself, but I'm pretty old right now. Uh, so it's very exciting and I want to show you a couple of things really quick before we actually uh, before we actually start with David the first thing I want to do is show you a trading ladder this is the classic e-mini S&P trading ladder right prices in the middle bids on the on the left offers on the right and this is a micro e-mini the new the new product and what I want to draw your attention to is a couple things. The pricing is in sync. That's that dark blue line going across. That's the last price a trade occurred. And the bids and offers. If you look on the bids and offers of the classic, you'll see the bids and offers in hundreds. And on the micros on the right, you'll also see the bids and offers in the hundreds. And this is literally day four of the new product. And that just reinforces our excitement and reinforces the idea that this is a really a very viable product, especially if you are trading uh, CFDs or Forex. Uh, I think uh, on, this is on a regulated exchange, and we're excited about that. It uh, should give you some comfort uh, if you're overseas or if you're anywhere, for that matter. Um, so the other thing we're going to do here before we get started, I do want to remind everybody, trading futures options on futures involves substantial risk of loss, not suitable for all traders and investors. Oftentimes in futures trading, you have a high combination of leverage and volatility, and although that could be an equation uh, for opportunity, which is why we're all here, it's also an equation for risk. So be careful uh, knowing that when you're trading your futures account, funding a futures account. 
what we typically do on these events is we decide right away to either go long or go short a market. And so we're going to do that today, and then we'll see what the results are after the event is over. Okay, we're going to go ahead and look at the trading ladder and see if we made money, we lost money. Um, let, me, uh, let me just show you a couple charts here. Here is the E-mini S&P, right, the classic E-mini S&P. This is, a, I don't know, you can call it a channel breakout. It's a 30-minute chart. Okay, and we're trading down, uh, you know, it, around today's lows. And then we have a regular day chart, right? Here's the candle uh, chart for this particular market. And then since there isn't a lot of historical data for the micros yet, it's only four or five days old, um, you have to rely from a daily point of view on uh, an e a classic E-mini. And as you saw from the trading uh, domes, they're trading in sync. Um, so there's a second chart I'm going to look at. And the question I'm going to ask you is, should we go long or should we go short before we start here? I, I want you to vote long or short or buy or sell, type it into the question mark, and then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make that trade, whatever, whatever the consensus is. Here is a micro 15-minute chart, and you can see it's very, it, you know, it's, it's, the data is solid, it's very good, um, and it's definitely tradable. So when we're looking at this chart, and I don't have a lot of graphics on this chart other than a candle, um, it can help us make a decision. So type in your type in your suggestions. Brett says don't short the hole. <laughs> uh, we're about 50-50 long and short. Let's get some more votes in here so we can kind of kind of swing it and go ahead and make an an entry. TP and 2860. Thank you, Vladimir. Appreciate that. Um, so we're gonna any last minute votes? No, nope. we're still shooting at 50-50 here. Although I'm going to say the longs have a little bit of an advantage. The longs have a little bit of an advantage, so we're going to go with that consensus. Now, what I'm going to do here, which is one of the ways that I think is a good way, we're going to do a micro trade. What I, the way that I think uh, this market could be used is we're going to do, we're going to scale in, or we're going to try to scale in, right? So we're going to go ahead and do a, a total of a three lot idea. So we're going to put a limit order here. Uh, we're going to put a limit order a little bit lower. Uh, let's go go to 39.50. We got filled on one of them, and we're going to put it a little bit lower. So at the end of the day, we'll have an average price somewhere in between of a three lot. This is how I'd scale in on, on the micros as a trade idea, as a trade example. Um, and so we went long. That's what the consensus is. I'll, I'll lower this, and then we'll go ahead and start with Dave's, Dave's presentation. And uh, I'd like to thank him for being here. Uh, he's been doing a lot of hard work uh, with us side by side on these micros. And it's, uh, we're really bullish on the whole market, all four of the micros. Here's David. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We appreciate it. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of the CME Group and myself, Dave Lerman, I, I want to thank you all for joining us here uh, for this Something New is has come to equities trading at the CME. We launched uh, a couple days ago, as you may know by now. And we're going to get through, go through this PowerPoint. It's got about 45 slides. We're going to skip some of them. But um, I have been at the Merck 31 years. I'm the Senior Director of Education, as Jim said. And uh, I've never, actually, there has been no derivatives launch, I think, in the history of any exchange that's been this successful so we're, we're quite happy with this and uh, we believe it can grow even more but we've done 1.3 million contracts in the first couple of days uh, so that's that's pretty incredible uh, I don't know I think uh, there was an options exchange index the OEX that was launched by a competitor exchange many years ago that got to a hundred thousand in a couple months and that was one of the most successful futures or options launches but the micro e-minis have eclipsed that so uh, we have a little humorous comment uh, here to uh, start off our seminar. It's called, yeah, but can he beat the S&P 500? And that's you know, just a little background in history here. The whole idea is to beat a benchmark. And for most of the last 50 years, uh, money managers haven't been able, it's been a big challenge for them to, to beat their benchmark, whether it be the S&P 500, the Russell, uh, MSCI Europe, um, or any of the great you know, indexed benchmarks out there. Uh, so, and it's spawned a whole industry, including the E-mini S&P futures and now the 
the micro e-mini futures, also ETFs, various mutual funds. So beating your benchmark has always been a challenge, and as a result, people like to just buy the market. And one of the great things about stock index futures and the new micro product is you can buy the entire small cap universe with the e micro e-mini Russell 2000, or you can buy mega caps in the Dow Jones or the S&P 500 using these contracts. We started back in 82, April of 82, with a floor traded large S&P 500 futures contract. Uh, and then over time, we launched electronic versions of it that were traded only on our Globex electronic trading system. Uh, they did They did very well. We've been very fortunate. Our entire equity complex has done quite well. Uh, if you look here, I have a slide up here that shows the 10 largest and most active stock index futures contracts. And uh, we're very fortunate. If you notice on there, uh, the mini S&P 500, the mini NASDAQ, down in sixth place, the mini Dow, um, and also down in tenth place, the E-mini Russell 2000. We're fortunate four of the top ten futures contracts are traded here at CME Group. So uh, day one, we traded about 7,500 mini contracts. Now we're doing 1.6 million a day. Uh, we'll get into the history of why we launched the E-mini and also why we're launching a micro now, too. And uh, it's a very interesting story, um, and we just want to be inclusive and make sure all traders can avail themselves of the stock index trading universe. So why micro E-minis and why now? Well, first, they're right size for individual traders. Um, because of this long-running bull market that's uh, since the financial crisis and ended in 2009, uh, some of the contract notional sizes have gone to two or three times what they were back in 2009. So as a result, uh, you know, it's priced a lot of active traders, retail traders, out of the market because the margins and the size of the contracts has just become too risky or beyond the val the, what they want to do in terms of risk. Uh, also, no trader left behind, just a little policy. We like to, you know, we want a wider universe of traders to experience the benefit of futures. So uh, it allows you to experience the benefits of our very liquid stock index complex, but at one-tenth the cost, which brings us to the next point. The solution for all this was just a 10-for-1 split, if you will. Now, we're not splitting any index. We're not splitting any contract. We've launched a separate contract, just one-tenth the size of our E-mini. Uh, so they're all one-tenth the size, and we'll get into the contract specs a little bit later. Uh, the landscape was ripe, that's for sure, to launch a microcontract. Uh, the notional values of our stock index complex, they've increased substantially. They're, they're larger than most other contracts, and we'll have a slide, uh, the next slide, or one right after it, that will show how big the S&P and the mini S&P are relative to all other futures contracts. Uh, these, the micro will benefit traders with smaller accounts or new traders that are just getting into futures or le less well capitalized. Uh, they have a lot of advantages when compared to other products such as exchange traded funds. Uh, Again, uh, according to sources in the industry, there's been a lot of futures accounts open, but they've been dormant. People haven't been trading. We think the micro would be a catalyst for those people to start trading futures products and the micros. Uh, it offers, like I said before, it offers a lot of great advantages of our equity product suite, but at one-tenth the size. That's a game changer. It changes the whole risk-reward profile. Uh, it could be used by traders and hedgers, so it's a good thing. Um, if you have a mutual fund or um, another futures position or an options position or an ETF, you can hedge using the micros, and you won't have to disturb your position, so you won't have any taxable events or transaction costs, um, and you'll collect your dividends if you're in stocks or whatever, and it'll allow you to keep your position yet hedge against any losses. Uh, it'll also allow newer traders to reduce risk from two viewpoints. You'll have to put down less margin and there'll be less dollars at risk. While the market will move the same, it'll be a smaller contract, so it's a smaller dollar size. The gains and the losses will be a smaller dollar size. But that's what you want. As a new, uh, new trader, you want to be able to, to control your risk. And if you are getting really good at that and you become a good trader, you can always increase your size and then perhaps graduate into the, uh, the E-minis. Here's the chart I was talking about. It shows the notional value of the standard S&P, the one we started out in 1982, traded mostly in a pit, and uh, the notional value is $700,000, and the uh, margin is $30,000. So, you know, we launched the mini S&P 500 back in 97 because this contract grew so large. And more on that a little bit later, but uh, the margin is $6,000. So, again, we're starting to get a very large notional value, and, you know, 
it's getting up there. It's beyond gold, way beyond copper, and certainly much, much higher than crude oil and soybean. So it was a good idea. You know, people were saying, are we going to have smaller contracts at some point? So I have a, another chart inlaid there uh, that shows uh, all, the, all of them, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, all the way on down, and then the proposed micro S&P, which is now actually trading. So they're trading right around 14,000. The micro E-mini S&P is about a 14,000 notional amount. Same thing with the micro E-mini NASDAQ and the micro E-mini Dow. The micro Russell 2000, however, is about $8,000, so it's a smaller contract um, than the prior three. So you can get an idea there of um, the actual size of futures contracts and why the landscape was ripe. So here's a chart going back to 1980. Uh, we launched the, this is just a little historical uh, thing before we get into the contract specs. And uh, we launched the Pit Trader 1 in 1982, it traded about 4,000 on its first day. And then you see that great big bull market in the 80s and the 90s. And in 1997, the uh, standard S&P got to a $500,000 notional value, which meant that every 1% move, and we had a lot of 1% moves back then, would be $5,000. Very few futures contracts move $5,000 in a day. Almost none of them do. Uh, it would take a week to do that with some futures contracts. Uh, there's just not, not that big of a movement. That was just such a big contract. So we were pricing so many traders out of the market. We launched the E-mini S&P, E for electronic, mini meaning more investor-friendly or bite-sized uh, version of the futures contract. Did very well. It traded about 7,500 its first day, and the rest is history. Now it trades uh, about 1.6 million a day. On a good day, it'll do two, three, four million. Uh, so, which brings us to the current time. Um, May 6th is when we launched uh, last Monday, a couple days ago. Uh, the the micros, uh, the E-mini S&P 500 again, starting to get a little large. Uh, the performance bond margin getting a little bit large, still handleable, but uh, we want to offer flexibility for newer traders and novice traders and beginners and stock traders, ETF traders. So we launched the micros and uh, they were a resounding success. It's one, it is probably arguably the most successful derivatives launch in the history of the field. Uh, if you can think of a contract that traded more than 300000 on its first day of trading, please tell me about it. I don't, I've never heard of it. And we did a half a million yesterday, so we're doing really, really good. We're building. Why should you trade the micro e mini futures? Uh, go through a couple of these. One or two of them do not, um, they don't really concern uh, European investors, uh, like tax considerations. But execu execution costs and liquidity, well, we've proven we have great liquidity in most of our products. The micros are no different. Uh, we've had great market maker participation, so there's great liquidity. Pound for pound futures contracts are probably the cheapest things on the planet to trade. You control a large notional value, and it's a very small fee that you pay to trade. The, minute, uh, the bid offer spread is usually the minimum one tick, uh, maybe two ticks on occasion, depending on volatility and the actual contract. You also have leverage or capital efficiencies, and you control $145,000 worth of the S&P 500 by trading the mini S&P, and you only have to put down about five or $6,000. Same thing for the micro E-mini S&P. It's about a $14,000 contract. You'd have to put down $660 to hold a position overnight. You have around-the-clock trading, so anyone in the European time zone or Asian time zone shouldn't have too much of a problem. Our market makers are at work in the nighttime, too, and we have eight of them that are working in each of the time zones, Asia Pacific and also Europe. For strategic reasons, there are things that you can do in uh, stock index futures, futures in general that you can't do in the stock market or in ETFs, uh, like spreads. You want to spread July versus November soybeans or large cap stocks versus small cap stocks. Very easy to do in futures, nearly impossible, or if it is possible, it's very expensive in um, futures markets. It's a pure direct play on markets and asset classes. Uh, you know, with oil moving up and down, people ask me, should I do this you know, with Royal Dutch Shell. Should I get long or short Royal Dutch Shell or Schlumberger or Total um, or, you know, any oil company? It's like, well, why do that when you can just, if you think oil's going to go up or down, play oil. Don't play oil companies. They don't move. Um, they don't always correlate with the price of oil because they have upstream and midstream and downstream operations. So on a day-to-day -day basis, they go their own way, whereas crude oil could go the opposite direction. So if you're going to play a market, play it via futures. It's a much pure, much more pure direct play. The micros will also, you'll have full offset with the E-mini. So if you have an E-mini and you want to, you know, if you want to get out, we'll, we'll have an example of this later on, but uh, if you have one E-mini and you get out of the position by selling an E-mini, um, that's it, you're out of the position. Well, with the micros now, you can be long one E-mini and you can slowly get out of it by selling a certain amount of micros. Uh, 
it's a 10 to 1 ratio, so there's full offset. You can offset one E-mini with 10 micros. Uh, that's very possible and very doable. We also have a clearinghouse uh, that is very good at managing risk and mitigating risk. Uh, they uh, set margins, they change margins, and they move money. Uh, we're also, I should add, maybe seven and a half here. We have a very good regulatory agency. We're uh, regulated. Uh, we have uh, compliance department, surveillance department. We have the Commodity Futures Trading Commission and the National Futures Association. So our markets are very legitimate. They're very well regulated as opposed to some other type of outfits and trading type platforms out there and the OTC markets. Um, you get, you have much more precision to more precisely, you can more precisely scale in or out of positions because they are smaller. Um, that's something that professional traders do all the time. They scale in and they scale out. We'll skip nine. Tax considerations is mostly for U.S. citizens. Uh, any technical analysis or fundamental analysis that you do is applicable to futures too, especially the micros. They'll chart just like the mini S&P, just like the cash S&P, and you can do your applicable technical or fundamental analysis. Uh, they offer many advantages, as we talked about, that equities and ETFs don't. And uh, the CME has been in business, CME Group's been in business for about 190 years. So we have a lot of experience doing this. We know what we're doing. And I don't say that to be arrogant. It's just we have a lot of experience. We've been through a lot of stress in the markets. We've been through a lot of history all throughout the Depression, throughout wars and uh no one's ever really lost anything as a result of a failure of a clearing member firm, which happens extremely rarely. But uh, the clearinghouse does very, very good. We've, again, two centuries in business, and uh, we're, we're pretty good at this. So here are the contract specs uh, for the e -mini. They're just like the E-minis, but you put an M in there for micro. So the E-mini S&P 500 is a ES. Uh, the micro E-mini is MES. Uh, same thing with the micro E-mini NASDAQ. The ticker symbol would be MNQ. And the micro E-mini Russell, M2K. And the micro E-mini Dow, MYM. The contract multiplier, we'll just stick with the S&P 500. It's five times the S&P. Well, the E-mini S&P is a 50 multiplier. This one is five. So again, it's one-tenth the value. The tick size in points for the micro E-mini S&P is the same as it is for the E-mini. But since it's one-tenth the value, it's only $1.25. Uh, all the rest of the information on the bottom half of this contract spec chart is uh, about is exactly the same for all stock index futures. We have five months in the March cycle, so March, June, September, December, and there's a couple listed in 2020 also. The trading hours are identical. Uh, the trading settlement, the final is at the quarterly settlement, is third Friday of the contract month, and the cash settlement is by the special opening quotation. That's just the opening prices of the 500 stocks that are in the S&P 500. Uh, the price limits, uh, you should know these, although it's very, uh, we're very rarely do we have price limits. Overnight, the overnight trading hours, we have a 5% above and 5% below. Uh, but during the trading day, there's sequential circuit breakers of 7, 13, and 20%. Uh, I don't, we've had 20% moves only three or four times in the last 100 years, so they don't happen very often. I haven't seen a 7 or a 13% move in a long time either. I think 7% we got to once during the financial crisis, but that was about it. Uh, that's within a trading day, of course. Here is from our website. It just, uh, it's a composite of the various months that are available, and it gives you the month available, uh, the open, the high, the low, the last trade, uh, the net change, and the settlement, or the close. And it gives you the Globex volume for that particular day. This was the E-mini S&P 500 on April 23rd. Uh, the micros weren't trading yet, but I put this up there to show people that the micros should trade very, very closely to the E-minis. By virtue of arbitrage and spreading opportunities, people will keep those in line. Market makers will keep those things in line. Our procedures will keep prices in line. And lo and behold, on um, the three days, four days of trading history that we have, the uh, micro E-minis are trading at a very similar price to the E-mini S&P 500. They track the underlying cash index very well. Below that uh, composite chart, you can see uh, you know, how we just multiply to we calculate the notional value. So the E-mini futures notional contract value is 50 times the value of the S&P, 2938, $146,900 as of when we uh, did this slide. The micro is just one-tenth that, five times 2938, and that's 14,690. 
Uh, here's another slide, uh, page 13, that um, slide 13, where we have the ticker symbols, we have all the initial margins, and remember, these are subject to change. Margins change depending on the volatility of the market and the size of the contract. So if the market gets more volatile, these margins will go up. If the market becomes less volatile, mar margins may be lowered. So we have the initial maintenance margins. We have the margin as a percent of the underlying value of the contract, the maintenance margin as a percent of the value, the futures price, the multiplier, and the notional value. You can see they're all around 14,000 except for the micro E-mini Russell 2000. And then just as a summary, I have all the micro E-mini multipliers below. It's just a little bit of re reproduction of the contract spec page. Uh, to really appreciate the micro size versus where we were back in 1982, I decided to uh, put a trade. This is a real trade. It was done in the E-minis. Again, uh, we just started trading the micro. So this was a trade done by a friend of mine that runs a hedge fund. It's, uh, he's the head trader at TransRubicon Trading. He also owns the place. He has a simple system based on RSI and volatility. He's got a lot of systems, but this is one of them. Uh, he would buy a mini S&P 500 futures contract on any relative strength index reading below 20 as long as it's accompanied by implied volatility at the money implied volatility of 30%. So uh, and he would exit the trade any RSI reading above 70. Uh, so this actually this happened on December 24th, Christmas Eve, and February 20th, 2019, respectively. So to give you perspective, to give you a little bit of scope of how three contracts, three generations of stock index futures, the standard S&P, the E-mini S&P, and the micro E-mini S&P would have performed, I put them all up, the profit and loss of all of them. So it's kind of a question that allows um, a trader, what's your risk tolerance, how much capital do you have to risk, and uh, things you need to ask yourself before you were ever to trade stock index futures, whatever size you trade. So here's the chart. Fourth quarter of 2018 was very ugly, as you can see. On the bottom frame there, you can see in the green line, that's the relative strength index, or the RSI. And on December 24th, it dipped way below 20, which is really oversold. It was about 18. Uh, and then on February, it uh, rallied all the way up to about 71, and that's where the trade was exited. So you can see uh, pictorially, um, pictures worth a thousand words, how, uh, how the market looked and how this trade set up. So here it is, here's a chart, we're not going to go over all these numbers, but you can see the very large notional value of the S&P at the start of the trade, the E-mini one-fifth the size, and the micro one-tenth of the E-mini. Uh, the initial margin, 30,000 versus 6,000 versus 660. The risk in points, uh, it was a very volatile day when he put the trade on, so he made his risk wider than normal, 30 full points, which is 7,500, 1,500, and $150 respectively. Entry price is the same for every one of the trades. The exit price was the same. Uh, it would be the same if you were to compare these things. Again, he did the trade in the E-mini, but we're just comparing uh, the pricing because the pricing of all three contracts is very, very close. The exit price same. The gain in points would be about the same. The gain in dollars, uh, you can see 109000 for the standard S&P. It's a gigantic contract. And for the micro, 2185 So again, smaller traders like the risk-reward profile of this thing. And the notional value at the end of the trade, you can see what a monster sized contract the pit traded S&P is at uh, $700,000 almost versus $14,000 for the micro E-mini. So again, just to give you a perspective of how these things will move uh, given a trade. Okay, moving on to something a little bit different now. Um, uh, I know ETFs, exchange trader funds, are popular all around the world, especially the United States. They do a good amount of business in, in Europe also, but we want to compare some of the attributes of them. They're both great products. The ETFs, the SPY, very liquid, very, very, very popular product amongst retail investors, institutions, hedge funds. Um, but stock index futures just trade so much more than do ETFs. So we just have some attribute comparison here. Uh, ticker symbol MES versus SPY. The contract multiplier, we have uh, contracts in futures and ETFs and stocks at share. So it's 2800 times $5 a contract, which is $14,000 uh, versus $280 per share for the SPY. The number of spiders to equal one micro E-mini, 50 shares. So 50 spiders equal one micro E-mini. Round the clock trading, yes in futures, no in SPY, except that maybe one or two broker terms can you trade SPY at 2 in the morning or overall, you know, basically a 24-hour trade. And even then, the liquidity is not good. In the E-mini S&P 500, liquidity is very good overnight. It's not like it is during the day, but it's still very good for your typical trader to initiate and offset positions. 
management fee there is no management fee with um with futures but there's a 0.0945 percent management fee with the spiders the average daily dollar volume of the adjacent e-mini product and ETF. So this shows the dollar flow into the mini S&P. Remember, we don't have enough trading history to get this yet for the micro, but they are growing fast. So it's $220 billion for the e-mini S&P versus $24 billion for the spider. So again, futures have a lot more money flow coming into them, and that's looking like that's going to be the case with the micro e-minis as, as well. Margin, uh, here's the capital efficiencies here. You put up about 4.3% for the micro e-mini S&P, or $660, subject to change. I have to be, to be determined there because uh, the final margins aren't determined until we launch, which we just launched, and I haven't heard anything different. Uh, spiders and stocks, uh, you have to put up 50%. That's regulation team margin. Margin efficiencies, if you spread, if you want to spread one micro versus another micro, we give you margin efficiencies or discounts. You can't do that in the stock world or the ETF world. Uh, you have gross margining. It would cost you a lot more capital. Uh, investor protections. Uh, we, like I said, we, um, we have the clearinghouse, uh, which is very good at risk mitigation. We've been doing it a long time. With stocks, it's the Security Investor Protection Corporation. Over there in Europe, obviously, you have other regulatory agencies that you would... Uh, you're more familiar with living in Europe. Um, regulatory agency, again, we're, we're uh, regulated uh, internally by our own surveillance and compliance department. We're regulated externally by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. It's a government organization that monitors us very closely, all trades, and um, we need approval to launch any product through them, make any product changes. The CFTC does that. The SEC, the Security Exchange Commission, regulates the securities industry and the ETF industry. Uh, tax treatment we won't talk about because it's not so relevant for European traders, uh, our tax code, the Internal Revenue Code. Uh, one other, couple other charts here it just shows in uh, the nice light blue chart uh, the futures volume versus in gray the ETF. This is the three major ETFs that track the S&P 500. That's the SPY, the iShares S&P 500 IVV, and the Vanguard S&P 500 VOO. And you can see in the top line in black, uh, you can see we do anywhere between the futures do six to ten times the amount of average daily dollar volume as all three S&P ETFs. So a lot of critical mass has come into our markets over time. Uh, also, if you look at our pri the size of primary futures contracts versus the corresponding ETF and other products, it's it's even more dramatic in some cases. Uh, mini S&P versus SPY, 220 billion to 24 billion. That's about 9.2 times the amount of futures average daily volume. The E-mini S&P versus all 7,000 ETFs traded around the world is 220 to 100 billion, or about 2.2 times as much. The E-mini NASDAQ does 67 billion versus the QQQ ETF of 6.2 billion, about 10 and a half times as much. The mini Dow, 27 times, and the mini Russell, about three times what the IWM ETF does. So again, large critical mass, a lot of big, big players and small players and mid-sized players in futures, and that's why the dollar flows are so much more. So how have we done with micro products in the past? Is this our first foray into launching micros? No, it's not. We actually have a mini crude. It's not a micro, but we have it's a half half size of our regular crude oil futures. It does 18,000 a day, so that's not too bad. Uh, it does 1.55% of its larger counterpart. Uh, the micro Euro FX uh, does 17,000 a day, about 6.5% of uh, the standard Euro contract. Micro Gold, about 8,000. Aussie dollar and British pounds, 5,200 and 2,200 respectively. So there's some decent liquidity in some of the micros, but uh, the micro E-mini S&P is eclipsed all these by a long shot. Uh, we've done about a half a million yesterday and all of them together and uh, that's an incredible amount and uh, that's only the first three or four days so great job thank you to our customers that have traded it as well as our market makers that are doing a fantastic job keeping the markets very tight and very deep as you're going to see later on I have a couple, um, a couple of charts that show how good the liquidity has been. Okay, so let's look at another illustration of what you can do with micros here. Um, precision trading or more precise positioning, also known as scaling. Scaling in, scaling out. So let's say a technical trader at a small CTA firm. 
All right. CTA is a commodity trading advisor. They're, they're all over the world trading baskets of futures contracts. Instead of a diversified portfolio of stocks or bonds, they trade a portfolio of futures contracts. Commodity trading advisor. So let's say one technical trader sells a June E-mini at the breach of the neckline of this head and shoulders pattern, which you can see on the arrow. All right. He covers on any RSI reading below 30 on a five-minute chart. So we see here we broke the neckline at around 28, 26, 50. You can see the break in the neckline there. And then we uh, cascaded down pretty nicely. And you can see in the frame below it, the RSI went from 70 to about an hour, two or three later, made it down to below 30. So that's where he covered. And you can see. So he sold one short and he covered uh, about mm, 10 points, 10 or 11 points lower. So it was a good trade, made money on the trade, but he's out. And that's the thing about it. If unless you're trading uh, more than one lots, like two, three, four, five, ten lots, uh, you don't have that flexibility. So what happens if the market goes lower? Well, you're out. You covered. If you did one e-mini and you covered it, you're out. However, what if the trader? What if instead of doing one e-mini S&P, he executed ten micros? So he sold at the neckline, and then he partially got rid of maybe half of the position, five contracts, uh, where the arrow is when the RSI hit 30, and then he left a few on, five more, if the market were to go lower. And as it happened, it went lower. And so you could see maybe he dumped another three or number two. This is what the micro, one of the things it was intended to do, to allow people to have flexibility and allow them to do scaling in and scaling out all active traders, or many active traders, and most seasoned professional traders will scale in and scale out of positions. Um, so this is one of the best reasons to trade the micros. Another thing you could have done is the trader could have just executed the one e-mini contract as in the original example, but he could have offset using the micros. And once you get to 10, that's it. You're, if you covered 10 micros, that would offset your short one e-mini. All right, so it allows you to stay your position a little longer, and that's really sometimes the difference between doing well in the markets is being able to stay your position, not getting stopped out prematurely, and just being able to have a little more staying power. And with smaller, more affordable futures contracts, this is what's allowed. This is what you can do. Uh, quickly, we're going to talk a little bit about fangs here for a second. Been a very popular trade in the last several years. No doubt about it. Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google have all done very well. You made a lot of money if you own those stocks. You made a lot of money if you traded them from the long side. But it got very ugly in the fourth quarter of December of 2018. What the micros allow you to do and what the e-mini NASDAQ allows you to do, it allows you to either hedge the position or take a different tack here. Maybe you can trade the NASDAQ 100 futures or the micro e-mini NASDAQ. Uh, and then you get all those advantages that you don't get trading fangs. You don't get 24-hour trading. You go, well, you don't get the tax treatment in Europe. You do in the United States. You don't get diversification. You only own those four stocks. There's 96 others in the NASDAQ 100. So, um, yes, the returns in an index are usually not the returns uh, some stocks. I mean, obviously, Amazon, Amazon's gone from nothing to $1,800 a share in the last few years. That's a huge gain. And you're not going to get that in an index usually. So anyways, the whole point is the average daily dollar volume. Uh, if you add up all the FANG stocks, all the QQQs and the FANG stocks together, uh, it comes out to about $25 billion. The mini NASDAQ 100 does $67 billion. So, you can use the futures, whether it be the micro e-mini NASDAQ or the e-mini NASDAQ, to hedge a FANG exposure or to hedge technology exposure or to get exposure because you, you're going to get a very high correlation between the FANGs and the NASDAQ 100. All right, let's talk about another type of trade people do very frequently and will become probably very popular in the micros too is uh, spread trading. Uh, spread trading, you know, small caps versus large caps or, you know, mega caps versus small caps. So the correlation, I have a few correlations up here between the Russell 2000, which measures small cap stocks. Uh, let's look particularly at the S&P 500. The correlation is 0.81. So it's not a perfect correlation. It, it moves pretty closely to the Russell 2000. The S&P moves pretty closely with the uh, Russell 2000. But every once in a while they diverge a little bit and they, then they reconverge again. And that's, that's, that's why the correlation is not 95 or 99% like the S&P is to the underlying cash S&P. That correlates about 98, 99%. Small stocks to large stocks, a little less of a correlation, but just enough to, to be a really um, interesting opportunity for spread traders. So 
a few things before we get into the trade. Certain spreads require ratios that are not one-to-one. -one. Usually people spread their long one thing, short another, but ratios change. And the clearinghouse has margin offsets, but they'll only let you uh, appreciate, they'll only let you recognize margin offsets if you do the ratio at the correct, you do the spread at the correct ratio. So you have to check with CME's website or check with your broker for the specific specifics of the spread you want to do. So, Here's a chart going back 20 years. Now, yes, most of you are short-term traders. Who cares about 20 years ago? But I'm just giving you the backdrop here. Uh, small caps versus large caps. Over the long run, small caps beat large caps. They're smaller. They're more nimble. They grow faster. Um, but occasionally, large caps outperform small caps. And there's out of the 20, 19 years there, there's like five or six years where large caps ruled the day. But I want to call your attention to... Uh, the end of December, the end of the year 2017, you can see the Russell was up 12.64 and you can see the S&P 500 was up 18.87. So a little counter trend there, small caps usually outperform but on a year to year basis occasionally uh, S&P large caps outperform. So in this case it was a 623 basis point or 6.23% outperformance large caps over small caps. All right, so now here's where things get interesting. Look a few months ago, going into summer of 2018, by July 20th, look what happened. Small caps were up 10.5%. Large caps were only up 4.8 for a 570 basis point difference. So what happened? Well, those of you that watch the markets closely and watch worldwide geopolitical events, uh, there's a little trade war going on between uh, various nations, including the United States and China. Um, as a result, Large cap stocks like Caterpillar or John Deere or General Motors, they're going to be affected more by a trade war than small cap stocks. They're global. Most of their, a lot of their revenues and profits are overseas and other countries. And uh, they just, they're more susceptible to trade and tariff issues. As a result, there was a little bit of a cap put on the performance of the S&P 500 going into the summer and small caps outperform. They tend not to be multinational and they'd be a little less affected by a trade and tariff war. However, go to the end of the year now, December 31st, 2018, and you can see uh, it's totally reversed. Uh, now you have small caps down 12.17% and you have large caps only down 624 by the end of the year, uh, meaning small caps underperformed by 5.93%. Why is this? We still have trade and tariff issues going on. Well, there's something else that, that I think outweighed the trade and tariff issues, and it was like a bear market. When you have a severe sell-off like we did in the fourth quarter of last year, especially in November, December, um, small caps are less liquid. They are fast growers, but they tend to have higher betas. They get whacked. They get beat down a lot more in a bear market than large cap stocks, or as a result, they underperformed. But now, look, as of May, year to date, as of yesterday, 2019, uh, people think the trade wars will be solved. May, may not, it depends. Um, but now, again, it's reversed again. So four or five times in the last few years, we've had a reversal of this in the spread. So there's opportunity there for spread trader. Right now, small caps are leading large caps year to date by about two percentage points, 200, 191 basis points. So again, uh, forget the 20 years of history, but there's a lot of great spread opportunities here in these micro contracts. Uh, this is just a, co a composite chart that shows various strategies, small caps outperform large caps, how, what the ratio is. So for the ratio for small caps to large caps, it's gonna, you have to do two micro E-minis for every one micro E-mini S&P. The margin offset is 80%. So let's see how that looks on an actual trade. Okay, look at the right-hand side of the panel here. Uh, micro E-mini, you do two of them. The margin is 391 times 2, 782. Remember, margin subject to change. The micro E-mini S&P, the margin 660. You have to do one of them. So it's $660. The total position gross margin is 1442 But by doing the spread, you get a margin offset or a discount of 8 80%, which is $288. So for less than the cost of a very fancy meal for you and your, you know, significant other, you uh, you can get into the position uh, spreading large caps versus small caps, depending on where which one you felt would outperform. Uh, we're going to skip this slide uh, because it's Internal Revenue Code, which applies only to American citizens and short-term traders. Uh, let's look real quickly um, as... All e micro e is an alternative to options. Just a 
quick, in a roundabout way, in a strange way, you can look at the micro as being such a small contract, you can look at it as an option in a way, if you're long especially. If you're short, it's different, different story, I wouldn't say that. But options are unique. They uh, have small premiums, they have leverage, they have, you can do hundreds of strategies with options. Options require four-dimensional thinking, though. Futures, you only have to worry about up or down. <clears throat> Excuse me, options, you have to worry about up, down, time to expiration, and changes in implied volatility. The micro small contract size makes it options-like, but without having to worry about time decay or changes in volatility. So let's look at what happened here. Again, the fourth quarter is the green line is volatility spiking up to above 30%. The blue line is the S&P 500 nose diving. And then rallying, of course. I have uh, five columns here. This is, uh, you see the year. It's actually the day in the year. It's the last two weeks going into the March expiration, starting with the end of February going into March 15th, 2019. So you have the micro futures price. That actually is the e-mini futures price. But if the micros are trading, again, and we now know this, that they trade very, very closely to the e-mini. So I have implied volatility in the third column. Then I have the premiums of the e-mini S&P March 2800 call and the March 2820 call. So let's say you're a trader and you think the market's going to rally. So you can buy call options or you can buy futures. All right, well, let's look at how the two or three particular trades would have went. Um, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the expiration, we got down, we rallied from 27.9150 to 28.11. The P&L was 20 points on the futures. All right, implied volatility went from 12.43 to 10.54. Well, what does a decrease in volatility do to options? It has an adverse negative impact. The 2800 call option went from 23.4 points in premium down to 11.9. So you lost 11.5 points or $575. You lost it due to time decay. You lost it due to the fact that the market didn't rally enough. And you lost it due to the fact that implied volatility changed. So the March 28-20, the loss was even more pronounced. You lost the entire premium because you didn't, got, you didn't even get to the break-even point. One of them expired in the money, but not by enough, not it did not get to the break-even point. The 2820 call option, however, didn't even make it to its break-even point, um, at, especially at settlement, and it expired worthless. So the 2820 loses 710, the 2800 loses 575. The futures, because there's no time decay and no volatility change, uh, you made $102 on the micro. On a mini, that would be a little bit more. That would be $1,000. But if you delta adjust also, the 2800 call is on the mini. So to do, to do the equivalent amount of micros, you'd have to do four of those. To do the equivalent number of micros to hedge, given the delta of the 2820, you'd have to do three micros. So you either made 100 with one micro, $102, or you made $408 if you did four of them, or $306 if you did three of them. Whereas you had losses in the options. Now, not knocking options. Options are wonderful products. There's a lot you can do with them. But in some cases, this micro contract is so small, you can buy it. And uh, if the market's going up, you don't have to worry about time decay or volatility changes. So it's, it has some optionality to it, so to speak. Very limited risk because it's a small contract. So uh, just, just some food for thought here. On this uh, page here, we're going to skip a few pages after this, but this is just using volatilities and giving you an idea of what to expect in terms of price movement. It takes volatility and converts it. And most volatilities are annualized numbers, so you can convert those to daily, weekly, and monthly moves. So you can see, uh, I have in red there, in circulars, and it's the squares in red, uh, one standard deviation move daily, one standard deviation move you'll make, you can expect to make or lose $2,184. For the micros, it'll just be one-tenth of that, 218 all right, and you can go on down this thing. You can see in high volatility, medium volatility, low volatility environments, how much these things are going to move. So again, for small traders or new traders, you'll have an idea of what a one lot or a two or a three lot in the micro will do under different volatility environments and under different standard deviation movements. Uh, remember, as a quick review here, a one standard deviation move, a, a move of greater than one standard deviation occurs only one out of every three days. A move of greater than two standard deviations is one out of every 20 days. And a move uh, greater than three standard deviations is about one out of every 200 trading days. So it's just a little probability and statistics and to see the probabilities associated with how much the market may move. All right, so we're uh, going to wrap up here in a few seconds, uh, a few minutes actually. Uh, we're going to cap this out at like 45 to minutes to an hour, but uh, I have here the 
uh, Bloomberg print screen, it shows the uh, bid offer spread and the size. And you can see pretty much a one tick market there. This is yesterday uh, near the close. Uh, and it was very liquid all throughout the day. You can see one tick, one tick. Uh, this is a very small swath, but you can see how much trades and how the bid offers out 10 by 49, 10 by 60, 104 by 150. Uh, it's done pretty well. It's done very, very well, actually. Next one, you can see the depth of order book. book and um, Jim Cagnina pointed this out earlier. He showed the ladder diagram of the E-mini versus the micro E-mini, and you can see hundreds of bids and offers deep. This is liquidity. This is great liquidity, and this is what you want. You'll be able to get in and out most of the time at one tick. Can't guarantee that, but every time I look at it, it's a one tick market. Sometimes it'll be a two tick market. Sometimes a three tick market. Depends on volatility. Depends on time of day. But uh, you can see there in the, uh, I have the red colored squares there. You have the size and the bid and the offer and the size of the offer. So the top of the book, there's 175 bid, 19 offered, 2883 bid, 2883 and a quarter offered. So very, very good liquidity in the first week of the micro E-minis. Uh, and here's the running total of how we traded, broken down by all four products. Uh, basically, we started out day one, 310,000. Yesterday, we did over half a million. Last time I looked at it, we were already over 250,000 today as of about 10 o'clock for volume today. So thanks to our customers and the market makers for an amazing start. Uh, took less than three days to hit a million contracts. Uh, that rarely happens in the derivatives world. Uh, so again, we have market makers making markets in all three time zones. You have that offset feature I talked about. If you have e-minis and you want to offset with micros, price quotes are available on cmegroup.com. Uh, they're delayed, but most price vendors will give you your real-time quotes. New traders, uh, their uh, micro e-minis are futures, so you're going to have to have a futures account. Uh, all our firms are, again, regulated by the NFA. They fall under the auspices of the CFTC as well uh, that regulates us, so... You know, we have a very legitimate market and fair and credible market. That's why we've had such success, because people know we're well-regulated. Uh, opening a futures account, it's not complicated. Most of the online firms allow futures trading. Uh, there'll probably be some minimum account thresholds and other disclosure documents to fill out. Uh, but it, that they vary from broker to broker. Infinity can fill you in on those. Um, shorting the micros is much easier than shorting stocks or ETFs. And margin with futures is different than margin with stocks or ETFs. Margin with stocks you have to put up 50 percent you borrow the other 50 percent margin with futures you put up a small percentage of the contract size and that forms your margin cme institute um, if you are whether you're a novice you're intermediate or advanced the cme institute has videos we have modules we have webinars all sorts of things to increase your skills and increase the depth of your trading knowledge we also have a trading simulator and i highly recommend and i believe infinity has a trading simulator too any new trader should trade on a simulator first before committing real money uh, be a very illuminating exercise in the old days we used to do paper trading now simulators make things feel and look much, much more real. Remember key economic reports? Anything out there can move the markets. Any of these reports, you know, federal open market, earnings releases, non-farm payroll, can move the markets dramatically. So if you have a position on, it could go against you or it can go in your direction, but just be aware of when reports come out. Uh, so key takeaways, we launched four contracts back uh, back on Monday. Uh, they're doing very well. Uh, they'll allow you a lot more versatility in the market, more fine-tuned, precision your positions. Uh, again, tax advantages for folks in the United States. You get a slice of the most liquid equity complex for one-tenth the size. Capital efficiency and low costs. You can learn more at activetrader.cmegroup.com slash microemini. Uh, I'm the presenter, Dave Lerman. If you want to email me, my, your first line of contact would be the folks here at Infinity, uh, Jim Cagnina. Uh, feel free to contact me. I think they're going to put this up on the website. It will be archived, and uh, they will have the PowerPoint available to you. And uh, always do your homework. And remember, know how bad the day goes. If you uh, remember in 1976 that Ronald Wayne sold his 10% stake in Apple Computer for $2,300. It's now worth $70 billion. So, uh, again, thank you all very much, and uh, we'll take some questions, I believe, or Jim will take some questions. Ah, they want to know the commissions. <laughs> Hold on one second.
Thank you, David. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come on over to the Infinity offices here in Chicago. Your office is in Chicago also, but uh, it's not across the street, so thanks for being here uh, for that. Let's take a look at what our trade has done. Remember, we made a trade earlier. And let's open up our trading ladder. All right, so we, we, we remember we did a three-lot trade. We averaged in, right? We did uh, three different levels uh, of trading. And here I could tell you exactly what the, uh, let me pull this over here. All right, so we did, th we're, we're long three, C plus three. Average price of 28.39 and a half. Right now the market's trading up at 28.46 and a half. And the longs were correct, at least if you wanted to get out right now. Uh, and the shorts were not. Congratulations, long. Uh, the takeaway from this is this market provides you the ability to do a couple of other things with your capital or your margin. The number one thing is you could scale into a trade. In other words, you could, uh, to, to, instead of doing one three lot, one, one three lot at one price, you could stagger your entries to get a better average price. The second thing you could do with these is you could hold positions longer, right? You could hold, if you think you're right on the bias of the day, you could hold positions longer. And that might give you an advantage because it's a smaller, you know, it's a smaller contract and uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's not going to, it's going to behave more like an option and less like a, a, a scalping vehicle, if you will. So that's where we're at today. Um, that's how I would scale out of the trade. You know, you could you could do, you could do uh, you know three one lots. You could do a two lot and a one lot, or you could do a three lot. Those are just limit orders that I placed on the Infinity AT Dome. Look how deep the market still is. Lots of bid offers there, and our open P&L down at the bottom is one hundred and seventy dollars. Now, now we just uh, closed out one of the positions. We're still long two, so we have a closed P&L of fifty and an open P&L of one hundred and thirty. And so we're about to close out the second one. And this is the Infinity AT uh, SIM account. Uh, this is not a, a live money account. This is a SIM account, uh, which has all the bells and whistles of a live account. And we'll give you a good experience of, of how to use the trading ladder and how this particular market works. Um, the next step, of course, is graduating over. A lot of folks who are new to futures might want to use the micro markets as a transitionary experience, right? We'll take a we'll have we'll take a transition between this and the classic E mini, so the bigger ones, the ones that are ten times bigger. So that's the other uh, uh, other 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 advantage to that. All right, so I'm going to let everybody go. I'm going to wrap this thing up. Um, again, I'd like to remind everybody: trading futures, options on futures involve substantial risk of loss. Not suitable for all traders and investors. Be careful out there. Uh, let me show you one last place where you can get a practice account for free. Of course, you go to Infinity Futures homepage right here, uh, and then you're just going to click on this "Learn More" button right in the middle here and learn more. And then you'll be asked to, uh, you'll be invited to uh, go ahead and, and request the free real-time practice account. You'll get a username and password uh, immediately upon submitting this form here on the right-hand side. Uh, and should you need any help in setting it up, I'm here. Avail I'm available to help you, uh, as, as well as the rest of the uh, customer service reps here at Infinity as well. And there's some really good how-to videos, whether you're trading the micros or any other kind of futures markets with us, uh, on our YouTube channel. You click on the YouTube button down here at the bottom. It should pop open a YouTube channel with, I don't know, many, 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 many how-to videos. It's a good place to start, especially if you're new and you're not familiar with Affinity AT uh, trading, uh, trading platform. Um, so again, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, feel free to reach out. Take care out there.